we're dead. <laughs> that freaking ragdoll, are you kidding me? Here, hang on, hang on. Dude, you knocked out their engine again. He's dropping oil. Oh my God, dude, that was gross. Fire for effect. After a successful operation in the Deadlands, the Royal Spuds were feeling good. We had lost a few tanks, but we had come out positive, spending nearly an entire 12 hours fighting in a completely different region, which we thought was going to be a huge strain on our logistics team, but was actually handled perfectly. With an established launching point for the Deadlands operations now in Brine Glen, we could confidently travel to familiar territory and have supplies as needed whenever our home front in Godcrofts was stable. It had been nearly two weeks since the start of War 83, equating to over 300 in-game days, and while the center regions had been relatively fluid, both factions were looking around and realizing that this was going to be a much different war. Long wars were usually the exception in Foxhole, and over the past six months, the average one had lasted roughly roughly 15 days, but looking at the map now, we were far from wrapping things up within the next two. Many regions were still locked in bloody bridge fights, and places like the Orbreaker Isles, the Farinac Coast, and Godcrofts had literally gone unchanged if you were to look at the Day 1 status compared to Day 12. That's not to say a lot hadn't happened, but every inch of ground in this war was being heavily fought for. This made every tiny bit of ground gained a huge cause for celebration, while ground lost was an immediate concern about the potential for its snowballing and blowing a front wide open. And speaking of ground lost, we were in the middle of our trip back home when both Lost Arkle and Planifada fell. As fun as it was to have the flexibility of swapping fronts, our absence was definitely felt back home. With our recent experience handling tanks in the Deadlands, we decided to regroup, rearm, and try to recreate that same armored blitz, but this time on familiar home ground. We rounded up the troops, called on anyone available in the region to stage at Fort Spud, and prepared the assault. As we loaded our tanks and prepped our infantry, I just couldn't help but think how incredible it was that this little base was just so busy. When we first decided to even build Fort Spud, I simply just looked around and thought this would be a really annoying place to attack if I was the enemy. And from a small bunker base to now a bustling concrete fort, Fort Spud had quickly become the go-to spot for any action down south, and it was really cool to be a part of it. Before we officially rolled out, we decided it would be best to send a scouting party to see what we were getting ourselves into. As we crossed into Tempest, we didn't see too much infantry, at least near the border, but we did see endless rows of anti-tank mines. These mines are visible if you're on foot, but if you're in a tank, they're completely invisible to you unless they are placed on a road, making them great for ambushes and area denial. In order to pass through, we'd need to have infantry to not only support the tanks in general to kill colonial infantry, but to also use wrenches and remove these mines one by one. It was going to be a pain, but it was important to get that information ahead of time. With the scouting done, I hopped into the main gunner slot in our silver hand, and we pushed out to join the advance down south. The majority of our forces and all of our tanks had already taken the eastern road down to Lost Arkle due to the wide open beach and low ground surrounding the relic base, allowing for much better tank lines than the winding road in the east. With an encampment set, pillboxes going up, and infantry on either side to protect our flanks, we began once again to take back lost. On the road? Okay. Yeah, we need to push up a little bit. Yeah, we got HEs in the in the trench. Yeah, back up, back up. Yo, push with him, push with him. She's pushing, we gotta go. Watch the line. 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 Back, back, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up. Yo, take a shot and back up, right? Alright, loaded, loaded. The uh, beach is clear enough. Alright, right, back up. Oh, no. That one sucked. Oh, back up, back up. Back up, back up, guys. Which one are we aiming for? The LTD, if you can reach it. Alright, alright, push forward, push forward. Let's go. Yeah. 
Left side, left one, left one, left one, left one. Left tank, back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Good. Yeah, front, 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 south. All right, peek it, peek it, peek it. All right, we need to go, guys. Too many hits. Back up, back up, back up. Out of here, out of here. Oh, left track. That's good, that's good. Yo, keep. Yo, repair, double reps, double reps. We're dead. Don't stay behind. Get out, get out, get out. Don't stay behind, don't stay behind. Yeah, this is gonna be close. You gotta let me go, man. I'm the driver. Yeah, gotta go, gotta go. Uh, oh. I tagged him, I tagged him. We gotta back out. BA, we gotta back gotta out of here. We got this. Hold strong. We're gonna make it. We got this. We got him. Yes. Do we, or do we need reps? Oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah. you're already on 33. Only on 33. Yeah, right. Only. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Guys, grab. Grab whatever people are carrying. Yo. Enemy infantry southwest. Rocks, you got him on top. We're gonna take one shot and roll back. Good job with both guns. AT bunker, back up. Yo, that guy just took the AT shot for us. <laughs> he got obliterated. Sorry. <laughs> that freaking ragdoll, are you kidding me? Yeah, shoot the BB. Turret disabled, turret disabled. <laughs> Somehow, some way, our tanks managed to survive the insane terrain of Lost Arkle and Planifada, and not one single vehicle was destroyed during the entire operation, although it was definitely close. As much as we wanted to continue the push onto Tempest Island proper, the bridge was once again only wide enough for one tank, meaning that their choke point could just slowly whittle away our tanks one by one, completely negating our strength in numbers. To reduce the possibility of a quick counterattack as we pulled back to repair and refortify, we blew the bridge ourselves. However, we weren't that upset about it by now since it was just simply standard practice. It was incredible, and as funny as it seemed, taking back this ground somehow felt even better than the push into the salt farms, despite fighting over the same exact ground three times now. First with infantry, second with a field machine gun, and now a third time with tanks. This was our home turf, and it meant a lot more to us than some relic base out in the middle of nowhere, despite how important that relic base might be to the overall war effort. With our defensive line pacified, we spent some time refortifying, expecting a counterattack, which never came. Until 4 a.m. the next morning. Although I wasn't awake, and the vast majority of the spuds weren't awake, a handful of them did manage to fend off an invading force of colonials that managed to take out our first entire line of concrete bunkers before being killed and all tanks destroyed themselves. It was a reminder that we were doing the right thing and holding this ground in South Godcrofts, since they had elected to try and knock us out before we're even taking back Lost Arkle. Without any movement at all from the Colonials south of us after a couple of hours and Planifada still stuck in another bridge fight, we once again began eyeing the Deadlands vacation. It looked like we were finally gaining ground into Umbral Wildwood, and the main target being the Foundry, a critically important town for Umbral and the nearby region since it had a refinery. Capturing this would allow us to mine the resources nearby, refine them on the front line itself, and then use them on frontline factories, greatly increasing our ability to both take and hold ground and removing hours and hours of logistics travel time. Although the Warden's advance seemed promising, just as we began to organize ourselves into tanks for a proper support mission, the Deadlands front began to collapse. Unbeknownst to us, multiple coordinated colonial attacks had set their targets on the Salt Farms, Sun's Hollow, and Liberation Point. And as each one fell, instead of sending our tanks south, we were forced to race over to Liberation in a desperate defense which resulted in us getting killed within minutes of arriving. 
Tanks were everywhere. Friendlies, enemies. It seemed as if there was literally no other thought in both factions' mind other than to throw armor at the problem and see what worked. And, unfortunately for us, it was working for the Kali's. The one huge difference between the two armies was that this western push was also being supported by infantry. And really good infantry. Our own focus on tanks did put the wardens in a tough spot though, since it really restricted what we were able to do. With everyone in a tank, there was no infantry support, which meant that not only was there no easy way to kill enemy infantry, but it made it difficult to protect the tanks and hold ground. Tanks were only as strong as their infantry, and to be frank, we had none, or at least not nearly enough as we needed. This combined arms push was slowly but surely walking us back to the streets of the town itself, and it wouldn't be long before they'd be knocking on the town hall. We had a decision to make. The Royal Spuds had set up logistics for armored operations in the Deadlands, but not much else. At our forward storage in Brian Glen, we had plenty of tanks, 40mm and 68mm rounds, DMATs for repairs, and tanker uniforms, but pretty much nothing else. We hadn't even considered this region to be anything other than a vacation from Godcrofts, but we had the resources and manpower elsewhere to try and make a difference, despite the trouble it may be. In Foxhole, sometimes you have to take the time to do something right, and that's what we decided to do. Instead of loading back up into tanks and rushing face first into the enemy, we fell back. W way back. All the way back to our back line, and we began rounding up resources to provide artillery support in Liberation Point. Waves and waves of Kali tanks and infantry were pushing us, and we felt that our best contribution would not just be a squad or two of infantry, but instead we felt that we could provide some desperately needed fire support. We rounded up three 120mm guns, ammo, BMATs, and everything else we could get our hands on, and pushed out in a convoy from Maiden's Vale in Marburn Hollow. After building a backup pit that had range of the town hall, just in case we were pushed completely out of the area, we moved up to establish our battery smack in the middle of Liberation Point. As our crews finished setting up, I ran ahead with a set of binoculars and began calling out targets. The hill to our immediate southwest was being pushed relentlessly, infantry and tanks storming over and then falling back trying to whittle away at our own tank and pillbox line. Thankfully, we managed to spot the enemy bunker base and began dialing in the rounds. But just as we were landing shots on target, our line broke and the Colonials were within 50 meters of the guns. With our minimum range at only 100 meters, we were defenseless and our entire battery was at risk of being destroyed. Although we could move the guns relatively quickly, we weren't sure if that was going to make us too big of a target and honestly felt that the best thing we could do was just hold on and believe our final line of defenses would hold strong. Despite the threat, I ordered the three crews to set minimum distance and fire for effect, hoping that the artillery would splash just close enough to scare the tank line, giving our friendly armor enough time to push back. Uh, 215. 215. One second. I would have moved uh, out of the barrel. You are, it's actually two distance, uh, 120. Alright. Alright, fire one, fire one. Yeah, increase distance one tick and fire for effect. Yeah, you're pushing them back. Uh, I, I need you to increase distance uh, 20 more meters. You're pushing them back. Fire one ready. Yo, great shot. Increase azimuth by two fire for effect. Yeah, this is good. Do we have a second gun up or just one? Just the one I have. Okay. Dude, you, you de-armored like a light tank with that one direct hit. Yo, you de-engine, or the de-engine, you, you, uh, caused it to spill oil. LTD's spilling oil. He's gonna run out of gas and then be stuck stationary. Yeah. Firing. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you just r landed right on the LTD. Pushing him back. And fire when ready. You hit a light tank right on. Keep firing. Yeah, 
Not one LTP destroyed by our tanks. Increase azimuth by three. Increase distance by two. Everyone ready? Got it. Yeah, you're right on their ATs in placement. Yeah, LTD's falling back. Is fire one ready? Right, Just obliterated all oh, so much infantry, dude. You're hang on, hang on. Dude, you knocked out their engine again. He's dropping oil. How old is that holy here? Dude, it is like so effective, man. It is the growing pains over the past two hours of learning how this works. Perfect. <laughs> Got him trapped between our tanks and our artillery. Oh, good, man. I'm waiting for a round to go right through this, you know? Fire. Yeah, fire for effect. You're right behind the tanks here. Yeah, just waiting on more ammo. <laughs> okay. Dude, all hands on deck. You are slaughtering up here. I just dropped oh, yeah, off yeah, the tools and I'm bringing another truck tool right now. Dude! Landed right yeah, on the two. tank. Yeah. I just brought 150 to the town base. So. All right. Let, uh, yell at me when you fire, if I can see. Right on the LTD, you tracked it. Fire for effect, fire for effect. Hit it last. Bernie, what's your uh, distance in? Come on, man. Variance is gonna kill me. Increase your azimuth by two. Oh. That was so close. Dude, you just destroyed. You oh, dude, you're laying around on the tank. Yeah, fire fire for effect. You're on their BB area. After an incredibly close call and over an hour of constant shelling, our forces managed to not just halt the colonial advance, but also push them back out of the region. Our rounds began to finally land on their bunker base, and it would soon fall to onrushing wardens. We held the line. It held, with the help of not just a tank line, but a combined arms defense and over a thousand 120 millimeter shells, the Royal Spuds were once again successful in the Deadlands. During this defense, friendly forces were not only able to resecure Sun's Hollow to the south, but also make huge gains back into the salt farms. And as much as we wanted to join them, we were thoroughly exhausted. We packed up and began the long journey back home to Fort Spud. In the next couple hours, the Colonials would be once again pushed out of the salt farms, and the front would move back into Umbral. 
With losses mounting in the center regions, the Colonials were desperate to create a breakthrough in Godcross. The Royal Spuds would spend the next two days fending off early morning invasions before the war's deadliest weapon was suddenly turned on us. Holy crap! I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of War 83. There's plenty more of the spuds to come, so if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Many of y'all have been asking how to join the regiment or just hang out and talk about Foxhole and other games, so I did want to remind everyone to check out the Discord link in the description below for my official Discord and, of course, the Royal Spuds official Discord. And don't forget to check out the live streams at twitch.tv slash moidog, where I stream every weekday. I absolutely love hanging out with you guys each day, so I hope to see you there. But... That's it for me. Until next time, peace. Oh, this is such a mess. Yeah.